when true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control. You are listening to Pentecost Sunday Devotion with Father Eustace Siame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Stay tuned. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. It is Sunday, the 5th of June, 2022, Pentecost Sunday, a special Sunday for me. I don't know about you, but for me, this Sunday defines what my Christianity is all about. This Sunday defines for me the essence of Christianity. It is a religion that is based on the law of the Spirit, not on any structure, but on the inner transforming force that comes from God. That Spirit of God that guides us, that Spirit of God that directs and illuminates our lives. Participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Seminarian John Mutua Musimi celebrating his birthday today. A Spiritan seminarian studying in Arusha, Tanzania, takes for us the first reading. Brian Odezue, child of Mr. and Mrs. Tabuchuku Odezue from Accra, Ghana, and Brighton, take for us the responsorial psalm. Chola and Anne Kamaki. Celebrating their 23rd anniversary of marriage from Lusaka, Zambia, take for us the second reading and proclaiming the gospel is Father Simon Sechabe Malay, an oblate missionary working in Rundu, Namibia, and he celebrates his birthday tomorrow. Let us pray. Oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation, pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 1 to 11. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, 
Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Syrian, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sponsorial psalm is taken from Psalm chapter 104, verse 1, verse 24, verse 29 to 30, verse 31, and verse 34. And the response is taken from Psalm chapter 104, verse 30. And the response is, Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God, how great you are. Second reading. By one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 12 verses 3b to 7, 12 to 13. Brethren, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. 
For just as the body is one and as many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one Spirit. The, the word, word of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 14, verse 15 to 16, and verse 23 to 26. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. If a man loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the counselor the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In celebrating the Feast of Pentecost, let us begin with the first reading that indeed explains in some kind of dramatic details about the feast we are celebrating today. Luke alone explains to us that the Pentecost was the context in which the disciples received the Holy Spirit. But how is it that we don't find this in the Gospel of John? We don't find this in the Gospel of Mark. We don't find this in the Gospel of Matthew. When you look at the Gospel of John, the disciples received the Holy Spirit on the day of the resurrection. That was the day they received the Holy Spirit. Jesus appeared to them and he breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. But now Luke tells us it happened 50 days after the resurrection. Why? Because Luke has a message for us in the Acts of the Apostles. He wants to tell us something connected to the event that took place when the people of Israel arrived at Mount Sinai. What happened when they arrived at Mount Sinai the people of Israel at that mountain received the law from Moses. And that law was to be celebrated. The people started celebrating the reception of that law, priding themselves in the fact that this law was to be given to other people who refused to take it. And so we are privileged because God has given us the law that guides us in our lives. We have to celebrate it. And so they started celebrating that 50 days after the celebration of the Passover. And look, Make sure the coming of the Holy Spirit occurs 50 days after the Passover. Christ who died and rose around the feast of the Passover becomes now the new Passover lamb who grants us his spirit that replaces the law of Moses. So that from that time on, the church was not to be led by the law of Moses, but by the law of the Spirit. 
That is why the Holy Spirit comes on Pentecost. That's why the Holy Spirit comes on the day when the people of Israel were remembering the coming of the law of God. The people of Israel were celebrating the day when God gave them the law and they used to celebrate that feast. But when the Holy Spirit came after the resurrection of Christ, we started now redefining the meaning of Pentecost. That Pentecost is not just about the law that the people of Israel received. Pentecost is about the new law, the law of the spirit. And you know what happens when you have the law of the spirit? You are not going to be looking left and right to see we seeing you when you are doing something. The people that are led by the spirit are self-driven. They are driven from within. They are not driven from without. That is what defines a Christian. That is what defines a believer. The people of Israel could not follow the law that was given by God because it was an external law. And that is why their faith was superficial because they depended on the external observance of the law. But the Lord promised that he would put the law in their hearts. If you go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verse 33, you are going to read these words. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. It will no longer be on tablets. It will no longer be in books. The law will be in their hearts. You know what happens to a believer who is driven by the spirit, by the law that is put in the heart? He is convinced. She is convinced. She doesn't do things because people are seeing her. He doesn't do things because the wife is seeing him. No, he does things because he's convinced he's doing them for God. God whom we don't see sees it all. And so a convinced believer will never take bribe. A convinced believer will never do things in hiding and show to people that he has a good face and puts on a uniform, on a church uniform, when underground he's a wizard, when underground she's a witch. A believer, a true believer indeed, will be somebody who maintains his own position in and out of season. Somebody who remains a believer outside the church and inside the church. We want to be recognized by this. We want to say we are driven by the law of the spirit where my own Christianity is not defined by the eyes that see me, but my Christianity is defined by what I am convinced is the right thing to do in my life. You know, this is not easy. This is not something easy to achieve. But we want to reach a point when we are able to say, yes, I am standing not because I'm following my spouse to church. I am standing not because I am following my parents to church. I'm standing because I'm convinced this is the right thing to do. This is what God is asking me to do. And I am going to make sure that my life is really determined by the faith I have in God and not by the impressions I want to get from people. That is a true Pentecost believer. And we are seeing something in this first reading of today. There are tongues. Tongues of fire falling on people. And they spoke in different tongues. The people believed in those days that there were about 70 tongues, 70 languages. That's what they believed. And so the falling of those tongues 
and making the disciples speak different languages is not just an explanation of uh, speaking in tongues. No, Luke wants to tell us the word of God. The message of the resurrection is meant for all races, for all tribes, for all languages. That Christianity is a universal religion where no one must feel out of place. We all belong to this family of Christ. That is why the second reading of today focuses on this. We see Paul addressing the situation in Corinth and the situation in Corinth was a bit pathetic. The Corinthians started boasting about their tongues. They started boasting about the gifts they received when they were just gifts. They had received those gifts and if they had received them, they were gifts and nothing more. But you know, they started classifying themselves according to gifts. You know, I speak in tongues. I only, you know, relate to people who also speak in tongues like me. You know, I have a gift of healing. And the people I relate to are those who have a gift of healing like me. I have a gift of prophecy. I can tell you what is going to happen to you tomorrow. What? But it's a gift, my dear brother. It is a gift, my dear sister. And you start boasting about the gift. You even forget about the one who gave it to you. We have believers like this. Who boast about what God has given them. To an extent of making themselves a focus. Not God himself. We have such kind of people. We have people who when you talk to them you see. They are trying to tell you they are more important than God. Oh, you know, I have this gift. Oh, I am so powerful. I'm able to heal. You have a gift. Are you calling it a gift? Or oh, it's your production? Your own production. You must have gone to Mami Water in Nigeria somewhere there and gotten that power. That's why you are able to boast. That's why you are able to think that it is your own gift. But if it is a gift from God, you are going to glorify God by that. And you are going to be humble. Those people who have received gifts from God, use them for the expansion of God's kingdom, not for the expansion of their own glory. And so Paul is very careful in talking to these people and he tells them to each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and as many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in Christ, for in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. The gifts we have are supposed to make us humbler and are supposed to make us know we are just a part of the body of Christ and they are supposed to unite us not divide us oh no I belong to that church where people speak in tongues oh no I go to that church where there is a lot of healing oh no my church has this and that my church has prophecy and we want to divide ourselves based on those grounds we are naive I know we can do better than that I know we want to allow the spirit transform us and make us understand that we are given those gifts. And I stress gifts. A gift is something that is given to you. It is not your own making. No, you were given by God. And since you were given that gift, you are supposed to humble yourself and say, yes, it is a gift. It is a charisma gift. A gift is something that I am given for a purpose. God doesn't give gifts just for nothing. No, he gives you gifts to be of use to the society. He has given you a gift of cancer. He has given you a gift of understanding. He has given you a gift of patience. Use it for others. 
Don't be boasting. Oh, I'm very patient. God has given me this gift of patience. I'm better than all of you. No. Use that patience to win others to Christ. Use that gift of prophecy to win others to Christ. Not to just show what you can predict. Like some people boasting, saying, you know, I saw this coming. I saw this virus coming. And I told people it would come on this day. And it came on this day. And they clapped for him. When you saw that coming, how did you help people get closer to God? That's the most important thing. You don't just boast about uh, the ticking of a prophecy you made. And wanting people to recognize you as having done something. No, it is God to be praised. It is God to be honored and glorified. And we want this to get deep into ourselves as we celebrate this Pentecost. In the gospel passage of today, we hear Jesus telling his disciples what he's going to do. He will send to them another counselor when he goes away. It is in this fair hour discourse. Another counselor. What does it mean? It means Jesus is our counselor. He is the one from whom we draw our counsel. He is the one who grants us all the answers we need in our lives. As we keep trying to do his will. We draw those answers in the words that he has spoken. And then another counselor who will come from the father is the Holy Spirit. So we have the Holy Spirit who speaks in our hearts and we have the word of God spoken to us by Jesus Christ. Putting these two together, I am telling you, you will never go wrong when you follow the counsel of the word of God and the counsel of the Holy Spirit who dwells in your heart. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, World without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Pentecost Sunday to you. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, alleluia. That has troubled my mind All my cares and burdens Onto you I know Jesus Jesus 